-hmm. and right. things don't get done. They wait until the last minute. Um, you talk about the habit of being decisive and, and moving forward when you need to. So this question comes from Terry. It says, I'm 60 years old and I struggle with food and money. I have no problem starting good budgets or good eating habits, but while I struggle with um, continuing that caring, mm -hmm. once I start doing it for a while, I give up too easy. So how can I break this habit? Well, Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind and keep it set. And I love that scripture. Love it, love it. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about a book project on that sometimes because the world is full of people who can get started, but they can't finish. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason, well, probably the main reason why people are like that is because it doesn't, it really doesn't require anything of us to say we're going to do something. It's when we actually start the doing of it that it requires some effort. And then m most of the time, things take longer than we thought they would. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might as well just be honest and say, most of the time, things take longer than we thought they would and they're a little bit harder than we thought they would be. And so you have to be willing to go the distance and have the heart of a finisher. Don't just have the heart of a starter, but have the heart of a finisher. And the only thing I can say is set your mind and keep it set. So you set your mind, you're gonna get out of debt. All right, well, you're out to the mall, which maybe you shouldn't even go there to start with, but if you need to go for something, now you see something on sale, so now you're ready to not get out of debt, but to make more debt, and all you have to do at that moment right there is say no. I've set my mind and I'm gonna keep it set. I'm not gonna spend my life starting and not finishing. Mm -hmm. With God's help, I can press through and do this. And every day that you do it, it gets a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. You go through a period of time where it may be hard for a period of time. Right. It might be hard for 20 days or 30 days, but then it starts to get easier and then easier and easier and easier. And then those things become part of us and we don't even have to make an effort to do them. We just do them automatically. Mm -hmm. And we're encouraging <clears throat> people with us to kind of take the challenge choose that one thing, like you right. said, that they really want to work on, and we're calling it the make one, break one challenge. Right. And, and really give it a shot, you know? See, see how it goes, set your mind and keep it set. And I have some real practical things do. in here. You know, make notes for yourself if you need to. Yeah. You know, put, put it, whatever it is, you know, put a note up, don't bite your fingernails, brush your teeth, you know, put a note on the refrigerator, are you really hungry? <laughs> You know, or, or whatever, yeah. whatever it is. You know, I have a, I have a habit that I'm in the process of breaking with just hurrying. And especially I get up in the morning and I love my time with God. So then sometimes I go too long and then I've got to get up here to the office to do something or I have to get ready to go out of town or whatever. And then I start getting questions that I wasn't expecting and everybody knows the routine. Yeah. We all go through it. So I end up hurrying. And I know that it is, you cannot be led by the Spirit and hurry. You just are really not sensitive point. to yeah. the leading of God if you're in a hurry, because when you're hurrying, you're in your soul, not in the Spirit. And you're not enjoying things either. You're not enjoying them. And so I'm focusing on walking slower, keeping my mind on what I'm doing, and so if I have to, I'll put up a sign that says, don't hurry. You know, we need to be willing to do whatever we need to do mm -hmm. to help ourselves and to realize that it's not gonna be something you're gonna need to do for a lifetime. You will form a habit. I mean, I know people who are mm -hmm. habitually slow and I don't even mean like too slow. I just mean, I mean, I actually know people, there is no point in trying to get them to hurry because they are not going to do it. They have one pace and that's the pace they go at. Now that can get a little bit off sometimes too, but the point is, is if they can have a habit of being slow, then I can change from, and I don't hurry all the time, right. but I find especially in the mornings, I can, can get into that. And, and sometimes I do it to myself. I'll make phone calls that I could wait to make until I was maybe on my way to the office 
you know, we all like to do what we want to do when we want to do it. Yeah. And then sometimes we get ourselves in trouble. So I talk about the hurry habit in here yeah. and just a lot of different things. Well, let's tackle an emotional habit. How about that? Um, this is Sean, and Sean says, depression, anxiety, and low self-esteem run in my family, and other members of my family have not been able to overcome it. If they can't overcome it, how can I? Well, first of all, you can't look at anybody else and what they can or can't do and base your experience on that. Uh, you know, you don't know what's between them and God or, or what's going on, and, and that's just a straight-out lie from the devil. Yeah that will get you defeated before you ever say, well, mama was like this, grandma was like this, That's my good. sister was like this, yeah. and so now I have to be like this. You do not have to be like that. To be honest, there's, there's been so many dysfunctional people in my family that if that were true, I would be locked up somewhere right now. And so you can overcome and have what God wants you to have, but you have to start by believing that you can. Mm -hmm. So whoever sent this question is they gotta fix their believing before they can yeah. go anywhere. And then there are people who suffer with depression. If somebody needs medication, I'm not against having that. But in addition to that, we must learn to think positively. It is very, very difficult to be positive and be depressed at the same time. And here again, <laughs> yeah. we've got the Word of God. And I know people can't just sit around and read the Bible all day long. But you know, I now have close to 40 years invested in studying the Word. And I am so thrilled about what I know. Well, some people are thinking, well, I wish I had that. Well, I didn't get it wishing and you won't either. You start today, a little bit at a time, day after day, you keep it up, you set your mind. Every day, things get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, and a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is something that, that I read recently and I'm gonna use this a lot because I just loved it. The Bible talks about our walk with God. And walking is the slowest mode of travel that exists. Hmm. <laughs> and so it doesn't talk about come fly with God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it talks about yeah. our walk with God, our walking in love, not fly in love or even run in love, but yeah. walk in love. And walking hmm. is one step after another, after another, yeah. after another, after another. But you can get anywhere you wanna go walking if you walk long enough. But I think the fact that we walk with God should be an indication to us that we're gonna have to be willing to invest some time in it. But what else does anybody have to do that's any better than that? Right. You can either keep walking in misery or you can start taking steps yeah. out of it. Slow and consistent. That's right. Don't give up, don't give up. All right, here's a question about confidence and the confidence habit is one of the things that um, you talk about. Audrey says, I'm a single mom and recently started going back to school after being laid off of my job for 11 years. I carry a lot of resentment and thought um, going back to school would help me feel better, but I just don't feel good enough to be in school. My confidence is gone. How can I be confident that I will succeed in this? I am so beginning to want to help people understand that they are more than how they feel. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Ginger, we let our feelings dictate our life so much that it is absolutely unbelievable. I feel, I feel, I don't feel, I don't feel. And of course, you know, I've written a book called Living Beyond Your Feelings. Yeah. And it's talking about you know, see, just because I don't feel confident, that doesn't mean I can't be confident. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many times when I'm getting ready to go to the pulpit and preach, and I'm sitting over on the side during the worship on the platform, and if you ask me how I felt, I don't feel anointed. I don't even know what I'm going to say when I go up there, but I can be confident in God, not in myself, in God. And here again, this has so much to do with her thinking, and so she's thinking wrong because she's feeling wrong, and that's all in the soulish realm where the enemy can get to us and put lies in our mind. And we have to learn to exalt the Word of God above our feelings. Mm -hmm. I like to say to people, are you gonna spend your life bowing down to how you feel? Or are you gonna bow down to what the Word says? If the Word says that I'm confident, then I'm gonna say I'm confident until I feel that I'm confident. So is, is confidence more than just a state of being? Can it really be built in our lives as, as a habit. Absolutely, and as you, you know, anybody's tempted to lack confidence. We're all tempted to doubt. We're all tempted to fear. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, I would say, and, and I hope this doesn't 
sound wrong because when I say it, you know, it's a fight all day, it's not like a fight like I'm, you know, <laughs> you know, fighting all yeah. the time, but all day long, you have to be willing to use the Word of God. You have to be willing to exalt the Word. Let him who has my Word speak my Word faithfully, the Bible says. So this is not just I get up and I say a one-minute prayer in the morning, don't think about God the rest of the day, <laughs> and maybe say a one-minute prayer at night, and then go spend 45 minutes in church on Sunday and wonder why I don't have victory in my life. Right. You know, God has given us promises, and He says we're to put no confidence in the flesh, but only in who we are in Him. And if a person doesn't feel confident because of things that have happened to them, I didn't feel confident either because my father sexually abused me for many years. And I just thought I had no value and that I was an accident waiting to happen and it was all my fault. I believed all the wrong things. So we get our minds renewed through the Word of God. It takes time. It's a walk, yeah. day by day, little by little. And gradually, over the years, I started to feel better and better and better about myself. So when I sit here and I tell people the answer to their problem, I don't expect that it's not going to take any time. I don't expect that it's not going to require any effort. But the promises of God are for whosoever will. Whoever is willing to do what God tells them to do can have what God says they can have. Yeah. Well, I just want to encourage everyone to pray about your habits and then pick one area and just begin. Understand that, that what you're getting into, have a clear goal in mind of the road ahead, and most importantly, be expectant for God to move and change what needs to be changed in your life. And here's a quote that maybe you've heard. It's a pretty popular quote, but I use it in this book. Watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words because they become actions. Watch your actions for they become habits. And watch your habits because they become character. And watch your character because it becomes your destiny. That's an anonymous quote. We don't know who said it, but whoever did, it's a great quote. Habits are very, very important. So please get my new book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits. Get it for everybody you know because it is so practical. I can't think that there's anybody that couldn't enjoy it. It's an easy read. It's not difficult. Uh, it's, it's not going to give you a list of 25 things you need to do. It's very positive and is going to give you some of the answers that you need to how you can change your life with God's help. God bless you and have a great day. Once I started taking care of what I had, I started to break my spending habit. As a family, we made the God habit. It's like living in a different house. This has affected every area of my life. Did you know that focusing on developing good habits will help you break the bad ones? Today, we're offering Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits for your donation of any amount. Call us right now toll free. 1-800-727-9673. Don't ever believe that lie, that there is nothing you personally can do to make a difference in the world. Behind me are four young women who know very well that difference. They were all once in human trafficking, but today there's joy in their lives. Joyce Meyer Ministries, Hand of Hope, and you have reached out to them to share the love of Christ. Together, we can do so much more. Go to the website, JoyceMeyer.org. Call the number on your screen. Don't wait any longer. You mean more to us at Joyce Meyer Ministries than you may ever know. We appreciate you and we thank our friends and partners for making this worldwide ministry possible. Together, we're feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, and presenting the gospel to the nations. Please contact us or visit JoyceMeyer.org today to share your prayer requests, find out more about our resources, see Joyce's conference schedule, and to join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.